I would like to welcome Hendrik Baar from Fedship, one of the uh, partners who are already in this field for many years, in 2006. Um, he's going to make a presentation about article content efficiently, whatever that's going to mean. <laughs> welcome Hendrik Baar from Fedship. Um, hi. Yes, uh, I, I may ask the question, how many English-speaking pe uh, people are here? Or not German-speaking people? <laughs> oh, there's quite a few. All right, so I'll try in English. Uh, I also prepared in German, but uh, I guess uh, since uh, everything shown on the, on the chart is uh, set, uh, you will uh, come along. Um, well, I was asked uh, to uh, talk a little bit about um, product information management. And um, I want to talk about it a little bit in general. And um, then I want to show you a little use case from our uh, agency work um, where uh, we used one of our modules, which I will show a little bit more detail. First of all, uh, just a question. Why are we talking about product information management? I mean, everyone here in the room knows uh, we have articles, and uh, they need to be um, they need to be uh, put into the database to be sold in the auction shop. And I know, and I think everyone who who has um, worked with the with the Oxid admin area and uh, entered uh, new articles in there has already um, got to know gotten to know that uh, this takes a lot of time. So. Um, I think uh, that in, in, in companies where we have uh, a lot of article data, um, the process of getting article data into the database is really something that um, gets relevant in terms of, of um, human resources and uh, therefore uh, in costs. And, um, if you are the one that is faster in administering article data, then you have an advantage uh, over your competitors. That's pretty simple. So I think uh, it should be um, in, in effort of every shop owner to get article data administration as, as efficient as possible. This is why I'm talking about this topic. Um, to understand what is product information management, uh, in my point of view, I want to go a little loop um, and show you actually something. Well, this is just kind of a cloud of everything you can say about an article. What my point is in this um, in this uh, map is there's a lot of stuff. Most of the stuff you see here, you you need in the shop, but there's a lot more for article data than what you actually need in your shop. Like, uh, for example, ah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe if you have uh, some certain deals with some vendors and um, you have maybe several vendors for one article and there's all kind of business information you don't need in the shop and not in the marketing. And uh, for example, if you print a catalog, you need other data and um, there's this, this screen wants to show you that there's more data to an article and more information to an article than uh, you need only in the shop database. Um, so what I want to say is why do we have to manage data? I mean, management uh, is something like a high paid business uh, position in a company. So if you say you are the, the, the manager of something, then someone thinks uh, you're quite important. And um, I think mm, the management of product data is important. Um, since there are not only um, the, the shop owners, which I call admin right here, um, or shop, shop drivers, um, that are um, putting data into the database, there's also a lot of external guys, uh, photographs, um, and you don't need the data only for the shop front end, but also for yeah, for for for, for your logistics, for controlling in business cases like uh, how much did I sell, how much did I earn, how is my Deckungsbeitrag, 
<laughs> and um, yeah, that's what I want to say. Uh, we need him and more than in the shop. Um, and uh, we need a centralized uh, position to, to, to administer all the data because if every one of these persons has, for example, his own Excel sheet, then you don't get synchronized. The one guy has one part of the data, the, one, the other guy has the other part of the data, and no one has all data, and then uh, you know it. Uh, if someone updates something, the other ones don't know. Um, so if you get the process of product information management uh, optimized, you can really uh, save some time and um, money. And um, yeah, then you need to do the data. So, so what I want to say is actually I, I think uh, it would make sense to have a new position in, in shops uh, which is called the chief product information manager. Um, who might be as important as the human resources manager or something in, an, in a company, um, just uh, to think about it. But maybe um, you don't actually need a person for that, but uh, that's later. So how do we do uh, article data administration in Oxford right now? Uh, we already heard this is not going to be um, how it's going to be in the future, because Oxford is going to rebuild the Oxford admin. Um, which will make a lot of sense and which will make it a lot of easier. And uh, as I heard in the, the keynote, um, Oxid already addressed some of the uh, problems I, I want to talk about and um, with a new admin area, but, but quite not all uh, topics about product information management. Uh, just one, one very simple thing. Um, what I want to say is the difference is uh, in the Oxid Admin, I uh, most likely administer the data I need in the Oxid front end and maybe for some Oxid internal processes, but I don't uh, administer data I need, for example, for my catalog. Um, and then we have this Oxid admin interface, and right now we have uh, no staple uh, processes or whatever. Um, so, so my my personal number is these thousand articles. Uh, if you don't have more than thousand articles, you can probably uh, handle all that uh, product information in the Oxid um, admin quite efficient. But if you need more, then um, yeah, you get some problems. You need a lot of time. And you get quite some other problems, um, which uh, I will address now, because uh, when I say something like, oh, I'm missing some field for my catalog, I could also edit uh, into uh, the Oxid admin. This is what we do quite a lot uh, in, in, in agency projects, just um, to, to add the features we don't need, uh, we don't have but need. Mm. And there's, for example, a lot of import uh, and modules on the market to optimize article administration in the Oxid admin area. There's quite a lot of Oxid modules from all kinds of partners. And um, <laughs> there's actually quite some years old, the project uh, Oxid admin area 2.0, uh, which didn't quite mm, get to a result in the community. This is probably why uh, Oxid now does it himself. Um, yeah, and we could do that, but uh, although I would earn a lot of money with um, yeah, changing uh, the admin area, this is not what I want to say because I think this is not the right approach um, because we are actually working in a live database which is also responsible for showing my shop front end. And um, this is just one simple graph I want to show. This is uh, my SQL um, CPU load. This is a load on the database server, and uh, the peak point is the point where I started um, in 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 an import tool, um, which came with a module. So I said, uh, now import uh, 20,000 articles to my live database. This is what it looks like uh, in the moment. Uh, we start to write all this data in the, in the database. As you know, I don't know uh, how many of you know what a database lock is. 
um, a database log is something like if if someone is writing to a table, then it get log, gets locked. If it's uh, a MyEsum table, for example, uh, which are some quite a lot of tables in the Oxford framework, it gets locked. And while it's locked, uh, I can't get any requests out. This is a lock, basically. Um, there's a lot of more technical detail to it, but um, for the understanding, this is what it is. And so actually, if I do a huge writing operation in my database, um, it can take quite a long time, for example, some seconds or minutes until everything is written. And uh, while I'm, while I'm uh, writing in that database, uh, surely the shop performance in the front end is um, majorly slower. So um, this, from my point of view, somehow sets, sets a border to how many article updates and stuff I can do in, 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 the, in the MySQL database while still uh, serving a fast shop. Um, that's, uh, I already said. Um, <coughs> right, and uh, now the point, when you have all, assume you have all your article product information in the Oxid database, then you have it there, but uh, you don't get it really out of there, then you need all kinds of modules and, and connectors to get uh, your data maybe for, for other channels or um, price comparison sites or whatever. So this is why I think that uh, administering article information in the shop itself is a limited thing. Uh, need I, I need to hurry up? Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, that's fine. All right, just um, I'm not the first one who came to the idea that this is not the perfect place. There are quite a lot of um, um, companies who, who deal with product information <coughs> management. Um, I want to talk about a use case uh, with uh, the company Tradebyte and uh, our customer Bike Mail Order, which we set up um, in 2012. Um, and uh, I want to show you why I think this is better than administering data in Oxid, and I want to show you the module we built uh, to do that. All right, just uh, for information, uh, the shop has right now 75,000 uh, articles in the database, which is not really huge. I already built shops with like three or four million uh, lines in those articles, um, but uh, significantly more than I think you can handle with the Oxid admin one by one. It's a status quo. Can you click that fast? Huh? You cannot click that fast? Um, <laughs> well, I can, but actually I can't find the employees that also do it. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> and uh, well, since it's, uh, they sell all kind of stuff, they have, um, how is it called? Schnellrede Sortiment, there's a uh, term for that in English. They change the, the, their articles a lot. Every six months, there's completely new articles. So they need actually to administer like 75,000 articles every six months, which is, I know there are a lot more bigger shops, but I think this is well enough to, to use a professional system. And um, the shop is also not using only uh, the only the, the own shop, but also spreading his data to, to channels. I think uh, some of you guys have seen the multi-channel uh, talks in the other room, so I don't need to tell why this is great. And um, yeah, we used uh, the, the, the Tradebyte uh, product information management uh, system for that because um, we personally have a lot of experience with that uh, system, working uh, with that since 2008. And I think uh, that this system um, gives you everything you need to, to do uh, product information management. And um, they are specialized only on that, not, not, not only, but mostly on that topic. That's where, why, uh, where they founded their company with. Uh, they founded the company with the goal to handle product information data. And um, this makes um, that solution uh, good for me, um, so that's why I like this. And um, well, 
here are just some key facts why I like to use that trade light system. Maybe just a few words for the guys in English. Uh, there's a lot of channels you can use with trade light, um without building one module or one connector. Um, we are using um, the REST API. We were just uh, uh, listening to the Plenty Market SOAP API. I personally really prefer REST APIs because they're straightforward. I can just program and get my data and don't have to care about all that SOAP. <laughs> I, I, keep it, I like to keep it simple. simple. And um, um, there's a lot of systems we all know that have kind of client software and I, I prefer uh, a software where you have a web-based client to be able to use it on any system so you don't have any Mac or Windows problems. Um, and this is one of the major key fixture uh, facts that um, I think um, we need it to realize really pro projects with that. You can add um, any field you want for your product information. So you can uh, say, I have a very special product which I can um, somehow, I want to I wanna administer and you add those uh, kind of tools. And uh, one um, feature that I think is really nice, uh, if you remember the, the graphic I showed in front, there's a lot of different people who have to administer data, like for example, um, the shop administrator, but also the photograph, or maybe some, some guys who only do some marketing text. And you don't want to do the marketing guys see, uh, see, see for example, your, 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 the prices you pay for the product or whatever. Um, so this is very nice that uh, several people can do it differently. And, and this is what, what I uh, really think is important to understand in terms of product information management. The Oxford eShop front end, I think, is just one more channel to all the channels I want to try to sell my products with. So it makes sense that not the Oxford shop is the, data, uh, the, the, the data master for article data, because it's just one channel as the others with certain dependencies. Now, just one screenshot from the TB1 admin area. Um, I don't want to go into deep into it. I already got the red card. Um, but what you see is actually quite clear. Um, you see all the data you put there. You see later in the Oxford shop. Um, and uh, to come to the connection, we build a module for that. We built that module already um, 2009. Mm. And uh, so it's quite, quite um, established right now. And um, this is how it works. Basically, it, sh uh, it pushes the data to Oxid straightforward. And um, well, I, I, I want to show you some code from the module. I prepared this NDA. Is it okay if I just give it around and everyone? <laughs> No, <laughs> it's only it's only uh, two hundred fifty thousand uh, fee if you <laughs> tell. So we get four hundred fifty thousand euros. That's nice. All right. Okay. <laughs> let's let's skip that NEA <laughs> stuff. Uh, I just want to make one point. Um, at Fitship, everything is open source. Everyone who buys a module from us gets it open source. So you have the possibility to to. Uh, extend our modules with uh, your um, functionality. And this is something I want to suggest uh, other modules uh, to use too. Uh, just a little example, we get some kind of hooks in, in the module, you know? So for example, if you, we have this modify parent field. It, it puts in the values and returns them right away. So what can you do? You can just add your own values or you can just modify the values. This is like, at the point where everything is, uh, has, has been gotten from the trade by REST RPE right before it's written to the, to the OXID database. <coughs> and there we got this hook, and I think this is something that everyone should do in the, his modules. So a module can uh, consist of base functionality, like a core functionality, but, but is extendable with individual needs. So coming to the end. <laughs> If you have a lot of article data, 
use a PIM. <laughs> I can tell you from my personal point of view, TradeBite and our module and the Oxid shop works very nice. And if you, not, if you now still sit uh, at nights and uh, administer data, it's your own fault. Thank you very much.